What would Terry do? Um, a lot of things. You know, Terry put out the statement, and um, like any move we make, we try to do it in the best interest of of the team, and and always are mindful of the players, and very appreciative of all the players have uh, played here, especially guys that have played well, uh, whether they played for for us uh, since I've been here or they played for other ones. I always lo love guys that uh, former players that come back and we embrace them all and very appreciative of everything Dion's done for us. And yesterday you said when I asked you about the pat whether you thought it was passing up here. I, what, yesterday when I asked you if you thought that Dion Grady called his pass, or not pass fans, roughing the passer, you said you wanted to watch the film after watching it. With a day to sit on it, what do yeah, you think about it? Yeah, my focus is on San Francisco. You know, it's like a lot of things in life. Control what you can control. Um, the league has very clear policies that, you know, you know, when you get clarification for their policy, those are confidential conversations, and that's a, there's a process to it. But it's like a lot of things, Mike, in life. Control what you can control, and what we can control is how to get better because we have a huge game Sunday here in Atlanta against the Niners. So that's where our focus is now. Part of the process, do you submit tape and all that? Can you give yeah, us a general part it, of it? it? It's, that's part of it. And like I said, when that stuff, you, you handle it, it's pretty standard operating procedure with the league. And when you have those conversations, uh, again, per their policy, those are those are confidential. You learn from, try to learn from everything D-led. Like the, again, things in life. You can't ever change anything in the past. Uh, there's no there's no point in sitting here and uh, spending any more time on it than you need to because what we have to do is we got to get ready to, to play and, and play better and to beat the Niners here at home. And, and it's going to take a great week of preparation. You know it's going to be a physical game, and we're excited about it. One more on that. You said yesterday that you need to learn to coach it better. Was there anything you saw on tape that you actually could coach better there? It's a good question. Um, I'll continue to, to look at it and, and find ways. <laughs> we're talking to some guys in the locker room after the game, and a lot of them had the perspective of, we start fast, we play more consistently through the first half. We're not even in the position to have a call like that. When you hear guys have that perspective, um, what does it make you think of, of this locker room? Yeah, you got the right guys. Um, you know, I'll never sit here and try to tell somebody how to feel a certain way. That's, that's insane. But I think, you, I think perspective helps. Uh, it's an emotional sport, it's an emotional game. We love people's passion, uh, the players, the fans, everybody involved in it. And that's part of it. And uh, that's why I think it's the greatest game in the world. But you have to have that perspective because when you look at it, there's a lot of things we could do. And you can rationalize and say, oh, if we this happened or that happened or this and that. But we're trying to improve. We, we need to make sure we're, we're trending in the right direction as this thing continues to evolve. And um, I think they were close in a lot of areas. There's been a lot of progress. There's other things we need to clean up. You know, there's some of the details in the, in the passing game. Uh, and it's all of us. It's, uh, so, you know, there's things you can be encouraged about. Uh, there's things you certainly got to clean up and that you have to clean up, excuse me. And we will. With the trading of Dion, the, the linebacker position has been revamped here. Um, how, how are they playing? How they look? Uh, you know, the, from Michael all the way down to Nate uh, Lynn, Lynn. Yeah, they led. Uh, we obviously feel that's a strength of our team. And, um, Things evolve, and like I said that you know, we're very appreciative of Dion and Foyer and things they give. That's life in the NFL. I mean, it's just if anybody ever thinks that there's going to be some lifetime appointment, uh, you're in the wrong profession. That's why you better enjoy the journey and stay in the present and try to get better and stay in the people as they come and go. And um, so it is in, in pro sports and really any team, whether you're in youth football or high school to college, uh, change is, is constant and it's going to happen. And uh, but doesn't mean you can't, you know, enjoy the journey while you're with those people and, and be very respectful and appreciative, which we are. So going back to the inside linebackers on current roster, Mike Welker, we think, is playing really good football, and, and the numbers show that. And same with Rashawn. They all have their strengths. And uh, Troy, you know, he played a little more in some of the two uh, stack linebacker packages and thought he handled it well. And then he had a little bit for Nate, and maybe he has to play a little bit more because you know, Mike, Mike uh, was out. And uh, we feel good about quit, too. Um, so uh, we feel like that's the strength of our defense. You mentioned Mike, obviously Mike with the injury. As far as yeah, Mike, Drake. But with those, like, look, if there's something major I'd update you with, uh, the truth of the matter is, you know, you meet at, or excuse me, meet. We're in here at 1 o'clock Eastern.
we don't have all the imaging done. So w once we do, and then we got to assess it tomorrow, a little bit of that, how they feel tomorrow, and, and then I promise you everything will be on that practice report, you know, Wednesday, and you guys will see it, who's out there, who's not. If it was something major, I'd let you guys know. Averaging 166 yards a game mm -hmm. passing. I know you like balance, but do those numbers need to look a little different? Oh, I mean, every week's going to be a different challenge. Um, certainly, there, you want to be everywhere. You want to improve. There's things I think we need to do better in the run game. I think the thing that is, when you're in sync and depending on your first, second down, there's some things I thought we did well in the drop back yesterday, starting with the first, third down of the game. I thought, uh, you know, you got to beat man coverage in the NFL wide open, not like the college game. It's margin like that. And I thought for a, it had a good route, <clears throat> covered a man. I thought we had a good pocket. I thought it was a really good throw. I thought there were some good throws made in the drop back game. I think some of the stuff in the play pass game, as you continue to work, I think are a little bit of our spacing, some of our details, a little bit on the protections. Um, as we continue to evolve, they, they can help. And that's where, again, as you keep keep working on it, just like you do with the run game, I think we're close to some explosive. Um, I guess I'm careful how much that is because it sounds like rationalizing, but that's part of the coaching. Like I, I do feel confident that we're, we'll uh, be more, I guess, balanced in a complete way. Is that a better way to put it? Because there's some things I think we can do better in the run game, too. Do you, when it comes to the quarterback play that you have gotten from Marcus, sure. Where, where do you feel like it's at this point? Because he is completing less than 60% of his passes. And well, I think Mike, there's a lot of ways to look at it. I think there's some guys that necessarily won't make the right play. And uh, they'll take sacks, and there's the guys that try to get you out of it. You guys had a lot of jams yesterday. They did everything they could to, to bring every kind of pressure on the man, uh, which we anticipated. And there's some things, and then as we started, the game started to go on, I thought we uh, adjusted well. And we were able to hit some big runs because of it and hit some big passes, no different than the one we hit to OZ before the half. You know, we didn't execute better. Um, I, you know, they bring a pressure. We don't. Uh, he can't catch it, you know, ball gets on the ground and then, you know, we, they, they bring an overload to the three technique and and uh, cut a guy loose and we take a sack there. It's led to, a, you know, Koo missing the field goal. So those are little things too. So I don't know how that's on the quarterback. Um, I think he's doing a really nice job. His simple plays, you know, quarterback rating, completion, be damned. He's gotten us out of it because if he hasn't, I mean, it could have been some other negative plays, which gave us a chance to come back in that game yesterday. So not perfect at all. Uh, I think that I think he's continuing to, to see him in a rhythm. If you, you know, when you watch the tape, especially in the drop back game, we got to be better on some of the other first and second down passing game. So when you're asking him to do that, some of the movement passes, they're not clean progression reads. And uh, that's stuff that we can look at as coaches and everybody. I think we can be better there. So the completion percentage, eh, whatever. I, I worry more about situational football, turnover margin, make sure we're clean in the red zone. Uh, which what were we two for two yesterday in the red zone? We need to get down there more, but so there's a lot of ways to look at it. But I do have appreciation for guys that will not take negative plays, regardless of their stats. As far as Damian Williams, you said I guess last week you were talking about Cordero that you thought he could come back. He's eligible to come off. Yeah, we just take assess. I think he's getting closer, and um, again I trust him and the, and the medical experts. So we'll just have to see how it looks like. As the week goes on for him. Do you anticipate at least that? Put him I'm in that window. I, I got to see again how he's doing. I think he's close, but again, we'll have to see. You know, I asked you a little bit earlier yesterday in terms of the way you divvied up the running back mm -hmm. work. How much of it with these guys, at least when as long as Cordell's out, is hot hand versus. Well, he wasn't what here to play either, Mike. Yeah. And there's some things he does for us as an offense just when he comes back. I mean, it's not like all of a sudden he was 35 carries. Very productive in what he does. But there's, there's things that CP can do that a lot of guys can't. He can go out there and what he did last year for us. And we'll continue to assess that. So when he comes back, I think it makes us a better offense. You put him in there in multiple backs. Is he a wide out? Is he a, is he a back? Is he a quarterback? Is he a tight end? That's where you want to get to. Because I know this when he touches the ball, he's effective. And he made big plays for us in the passing game a lot last year and the run game. And, and, and he was certainly having a – a pretty good season so far running the football. But when he comes back, um, I know this, there's a lot of things he can do for us, and we'll, that'll make us better as a complete offense. I meant, I meant more until he gets back, how do you handle that? Is that more hot hand with Tyler and Caleb and Damian if he comes back, or is that how do you how do you approach that because of what he's able to do? That's what, what we're going to call. It's a little different. There's certain things we ask guys to do. Um, 
even when he was in there. I mean, there are certain things, that, schemes that we may ask Tyler, just kind of give everybody a role. We like to play everybody. Uh, we're not playing the backup quarterback yet in the two quarterback system. So, you know what I mean? D-led, when he's the one guy that doesn't play. But uh, we do play everybody. And so everybody's got different roles. That's why sometimes maybe it's fatigue, guy needs a break. Other times it may be a package that the game's within the games, like with Avery's touchdown run yesterday. There was something if we had gotten a certain look, we would have run with him. And then we got the other look and got us in the right play and got him on the free safety and he made a little spin move and got in the end zone. What was the effect of Kyle not being there yesterday, at least what you saw defensively? And did it slow things down the first half in the passing game? Not necessarily. That wasn't the, the major obstacle. You know, a lot of it was, you know, you get an arm first and then whether it was a penalty or, you know, negative play. And it, was, it wasn't like they were sitting there playing a lot of man where you needed somebody to win one-on-one -on -one every down. That wasn't going on. They brought a lot of different pressures, a lot of simulated pressures, a lot of shell look as they, they rolled down to the disguise and bailed out of there. Um, you know, I think that's a trend right now. And certainly going against that, you know, as they give you a single high look and then they bail out, they're trying to make sure the ball's not thrown over their head. Maybe had a shot we were trying to take, and unfortunately we didn't get the play off. So certainly when, uh, love having Kyle out there, but if he's not available, it's my job to find out what's the solution. So, I don't. Well, if you don't, if you if you don't if you don't win, you know, like that's a that's a great subjective argument. But I think there were some things that we tried to challenge him on, and uh, certainly wasn't perfect. But uh, ultimately, you know, we kept kept with the plan, and uh, because if if it's out of reach, it can get really ugly. But you're knowing going in the fourth as we were driving, like we could stay into our normal plan, which certainly gave us a a, a better chance, and. Uh, even not getting the ball back late, you know, we had the drive in between um, before OZ's touchdown where we got a face mask call and it takes you, you know, those are those are crucial penalties and it was a face mask and uh, those kind of negative plays, but there was enough possessions there for us to win it regardless of what happened at the end. Can you put more on OZ's plate? OZ does a lot of things for us, d -led. He does a lot and he's playing good football for us. Uh, yeah, because I was just, you know, 12 or 14, looked like maybe, you know, just caught every ball coming his way pretty much. You know, Hodge made a big play on the two-point conversion. Hodge has made some big plays for us. Yeah, and, and Bird's a really smart player and played multiple roles. And, uh, you know, Brian was up again yesterday, and some things will continue to push with him as he gets more comfortable in the offense. Anything else? Yes. I like to wait till the end to go to next week. Go for it. Yeah. You got your flex on today. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Somebody had that shirt on yeah, yesterday. Ira, had Ira did. Yeah, he was flexing on everybody, yeah, and he, he brought it today. Yeah, it's uh, for the crowd. It's the Hall of Fame selector shirt. Big flex. All right. <laughs> no, um, looking ahead, San Francisco. Mm -hmm. um, didn't I haven't finished reviewing yesterday, but saw the Rams game. Um, uh, how are they playing? And um, you know, I guess Debo's having one. Is off to a good start. Yeah, uh, doing the kind of multiple stuff. Quarter really he's a fun player to watch. I mean, obviously, when you're playing him, he's a he's a pain. And then you know what? Um, and it's because he's a good football player. And he's very strong. A guy that we really liked. Uh, you know, that's the thing. That's why there's a you have a draft, so you can't you can't take everybody. It's not like recruiting. You can't get uh, 25 five stars because uh, trust me, I'd I'd, I'd want to be coaching Tebow. Uh, really liked him coming out of South Carolina. Really good football player, and I say that as a comment. He is a football player. Uh, really strong hands, uh, hard to tackle. Play multiple spots, so we got a work cut out there. We got to make sure we account for him and tackle him. Uh, obviously, Kittle made a ton of plays in this league. Plays at unbelievably fast pace. Really good, instinctive player. Finds different ways to. They do a good job finding different ways, and he does. He's got a good feel. And some of the delay stuff he does to create explosives. Um, and they play hard. It's going to be a physical challenge. I mean, we, I think they're the top rush, uh, the second rush defense, rushing defense, according this morning. I think they're giving up the least amount of yards per carry, uh, number one total yards overall defensively. And so it's, you know, it's what you want. You, you don't want to play. Uh, you want to go against the best. And the Niners, they have a really good scheme. They got a really good D line coach, really good defensive coordinator. Uh, so we're excited about the challenge. Well, they were making a big deal out of D'Amico blitzing a lot in the Rams game. They, I guess they haven't traditionally done that. Probably saw it's it's on tape. It's on tape, man. Maybe, you know, 
He's a terrific football coach. Tomiko is. And it's a really good scheme. I think Chris Kacerik is as good as any D line coach in the league. And uh, those guys bring it. And I got to hold them in respect for them. And, you know, it's two really physical styles. And it should be a pretty good matchup here uh, Sunday in Atlanta. I see you guys don't use Cordero the same way that San Francisco uses Debo, but the fact that your defense has seen a player at least somewhat similar, does does that help at all in, in prep? Or I think maybe because you see non-traditional sets. Certainly, yeah. Uh, I think some of the motion stuff you'll see, I think you'll um, – it's not going to be – you know, they're different players, but – and they're both really good players. And ironically, they're both from South Carolina. But um, – yeah, I, I mean, like I said, it, it certainly helps when you, you're playing against versatility, but again, it's, he's a different player. When you study the way Kyle Pulse plays on offense, you know, is there any tendencies you see or anything similar that you've already seen somewhere else because he's so unique in what he does? Well, I think, you know, I think the, the easy thing is to label everybody that's, there's like an evolution of football, no doubt for but different. When people have success in the game, the way the games trend, I, I think the easy thing to do is say, okay, that team, ran wide zone. Well, they run it a little bit differently than, than Mike Shanahan and Gary Kubiak and Alex Gibbs. Uh, the thing that you see about the Niners is uh, pretty creative um, what they do. And uh, they play fast, but they practice hard. And not, it's not the play calls. It's the intent, it's the details, it's the climate that he's created there. I mean, sometimes, like I said, like, you know, it, it could be a basic call. And when you got guys that are in sync and they and you believe in what you're doing, they can take a very, what you call, vanilla play call, and make it special. And so if somebody has the playbook. I could print out a playbook. And it won't matter. It doesn't matter. If I could get Kyle's playbook. It wouldn't matter. Um, but it's that's what I think. I think you're seeing. I think everybody on the surface is like, oh, well, this guy came from here. He came here. Everybody, no. I mean, usually smart people. Green Bay's playing a lot different. Play the strengths of your, your team. And everybody's got their own ideas. I mean, I learned something from somewhere, but I've taken some from every coach I've been with, offense or defense, and you make it your own. And that's why I have a lot of respect for Kyle. I mean, so different system, but I, I like, I appreciate the way they play and and uh, uh, you know how he gets his team ready, and they got a, they got a good culture.